So welcome to the podcast, Christy. I'm excited to have this marketing conversation with you because I know so many of us podcasters think that podcasting is you put it out there and if you build it, they will come. So I'm excited to talk about your marketing funnel strategy and all the goodies because this is a big reason that podcasters fall into pod fate, I believe. Yes. I know. I'm excited to talk about it too. Obviously, I get excited to talk about marketing as a marketing strategist. I realize not everybody shares the same excitement and level of passion for it. But yes, I think it's important to, as a marketing strategist, that's that's my big thing is like, let's figure out what the pieces are and how do those pieces fit together to create a cohesive strategy? Because we could be doing different marketing tactics all over the board, but if there's no overarching strategy or plan for how they fit together, then that's when you're kind of spinning your wheels, spending lots of time, energy, and budget dollars and not getting the results you want. Wait, there's supposed to be a plan of how we're supposed to do all this? I say Ideally, yes. (laughs) But not really. (laughs) Yes, yes. Typically, the business owners that I work with are usually a few, a couple years in or longer to their business. And so... They are, they've done that kind of haphazard, like, let me try this, let me do that, let me do it. And they they realize it's not a sustainable long-term strategy. And they they would love to be in a place where they're getting some inbound leads and not having to go out and network and get all those referrals. I mean, networking is so important, but not have to rely on those sources for all of their future clients. So yes, having a strategy and plan is my jam. So speaking of strategy and plan then, as a podcaster and somebody who has some marketing background, but again, have stepped out of that a little bit, where does our podcast kind of fit in? I guess maybe we'll have to like back the train up a little bit and like talk about like, what is a marketing funnel so that we can figure out where yes. to plug our podcast? Sure. So I love talking about this on podcast because I'm such a visual person. I use my hands, even though I realize people can't see that. But if you think of a funnel, right, you have the widest part of the funnel at the top, that is our attract phase. That is how we are getting out in front of new people, helping them learn about us and what we offer. The next stage down from that, where it starts to narrow a little bit is convert. And there we're talking about converting people to become leads, which is getting their name and email address in exchange for something, getting them on your list. So that then you can move to the next stage of the funnel, which is nurture. And that's staying in touch with people over time through things like email marketing and social media. And then at the bottom is closing the deal, which is making the sale when the timing is right. And I always say I am not a sales coach, but I just like to talk about what you can be doing in your marketing all along the way to make closing the deal a little bit easier. Ooh. So how does our podcast play into this funnel? Yeah. So podcasting in my mind, typically most podcasts are are really geared towards that attract and I think also the nurture phase. Now, if we get into things like private podcasting, which more people are, I feel like less people are familiar with what private podcasting is, but that would be a lead magnet. That would be that convert stage. But typically most podcasts are open, available for people, right? You don't have to give your name and email address to be able to listen to the podcast. It's just available. And so podcasting can be used at that attract phase, right, to get out in front of people. But to your point, too, people may not just find you and stumble upon you. So it's almost like, I don't know, podcasting is kind of interesting because it's almost it is a marketing tactic. But then there's almost like you need to do this pre work to draw people into your podcast, too. Yeah. And is that pre work part of marketing? <laughs> I'm laughing because it's it one of those things that I try to explain to people all the time of like, if you build it, they won't come. There are some <laughs> tactics. You can do some SEO. You can do some things. Yeah. But yeah. it's more than just posting your show. So although mm-hmm. it's in that top part of your pyramid, mm-hmm. I'll ask you, do you want to talk to us more on how we use this to get people into our show or how we use podcasting to go down the funnel because we could take it either direction. And I want to know which one you're more passionate about. Yeah. It's interesting. So excited about. Yeah. So let's say for the sake of argument, podcasting is going to be, let's say, like you said, you build it, they don't come. Okay. So it's not really at the attract phase. So let's say it's really meant to nurture. 
it's that like longer part of our funnel usually, right? That we want to stay in touch with people over time because the first time they hear about us, they might not be ready to work with us yet. So how can we stay in touch with them? And if you're getting them to subscribe to your podcast, that's a good way to nurture them, right? Because they'll be notified when you have a new episode come out. So let's say for the sake of this conversation, we're putting podcasts more in the nurture phase. Because I think especially as you're building it, that is more where it sits. And then maybe down the line, once you're more established, right? And maybe you're getting some bigger names on your show, then maybe it starts helping you. So we're kind of figuring this out even as we talk about it, Jen. So if it, if it truly sits at that nurture phase at the beginning, how are we getting people to it? And I did a LinkedIn live session with a woman who focuses on helping coaches create memberships. And we talked about how you always need to be marketing. And a lot of times she gets people coming to her and being like, well, I need to build the membership first. I can't market anything yet. And I see something similar too with a lot of business owners where they're like, I can't market yet. I don't have my new offer ready. I want to launch a new thing. And it's like, you really need to be marketing all of the time because you need to think of marketing as building your audience so that they're they're primed and they're ready for whatever it is that you're going to launch next, be it a paid offer or a podcast or whatever it is that you want them to engage with. Yeah. I agree. And I think so many people, and self-included, I'll call myself out on this, is we build the thing before we do the marketing, but then you have a skewed view of market research also. Yes. Yes. We should, I will also include, if we can in the show notes, the link to that LinkedIn live session, because it gets to this whole thing as like, you don't want to wait. You want to, because of all these reasons, right? You can get that market research if you're already marketing to people and you're you're getting some insights that can help inform whether it's that offer you're creating or that podcast that you're brainstorming episodes or topics that you want to cover, right? Getting the market research can help you make it that much better. Yeah, for sure. And I just feel like the more you do it and the more repetitive you get with it, like my show has become, I think in the last year, this show itself has had four rebrands. I don't recommend it. I'm a podcast strategist for a living, so I do all the things wrong. But we've had four rebrands and one of them stuck. And it was amazing to see that and I wouldn't have been out in the market. I would have not known these things. So for the podcaster that hears the word marketing, that's like cringe. I don't have time for this. I barely have time to edit my podcast or come up with the idea. Do you have any tips, tools, tricks, whatever for that podcaster that's like, oh my goodness, marketing is overwhelming. How can Mm -hmm. we make this? Maybe there's like a simple, like one step we should be taking instead of the 30 steps that goes with marketing. Yeah. I don't think I can distill it down to one step as much as I would love to say I can give you that like silver bullet. Here's what you got to do and everything will fall into place. But we did talk about sharing some resources. So I would recommend going to my masterclass recording, which will be in the show notes. That's, I dive in, it's only like 20 to 30 minutes. It's quick. It's, it's me diving into the framework that I explained in this conversation in more detail and showing you exactly how to use that framework to sketch out your marketing plan. Because I think a lot of times it does feel overwhelming. And it feels like I don't have enough time to do this. But the reality of it is you don't have time not to do it. Because if you're not marketing, you're only able to get clients for so long. Most of the clients who come to me have built their coaches, consultants, solopreneurs, they've built their businesses on referrals and networking and word of mouth. And it's worked. They've built a business. And they also recognize that it's not a sustainable long-term strategy because you don't have control over it. You don't know when your next referral is coming. So you need to get those things in place to help you keep getting out in front of new people, to help you keep getting people's names and email addresses so you can follow up with them and stay in touch with them over time and then build, start filling that funnel and keep the people moving down so that then you're getting clients at the end of the day. Yes. So I know one of the biggest complaints that I have with my clients is, well, how do we get more people in our space? Like, what is Mm -hmm. like, if you don't know what marketing is, 
because I went to school. I have a master's in marketing degree. Like I went to school for marketing. <laughs> That's what I did for schooling. Didn't stay in it, but I, I went to school for it. It's a big, beefy word that is very intimidating. And I think as mm-hmm. podcasters, if we could explain maybe, or if you could explain maybe, what would marketing look like so it doesn't seem like this big, daunting task for us? Like, mm-hmm. how do we, okay, we're marketing. Are we showing up on all the platforms? Are we going to network? Like, what kind of, yeah. I know, again, not one strategy fits every business, but just mm-hmm. kind of like something that's simple that podcasters can take some steps and then get into Christy's space so she can help you with this. Yes. So I was going to say, obviously, self-serving here, but I offer I offer marketing strategy power hour sessions for this exact thing because I'm a huge frameworks and process person. And I also totally agree with you. There is no one size fits all model to marketing your business. So it is very much about finding those tactics that make sense for you and your business and what's doable and realistic to create that overall strategy. So everybody's plan is going to look a little bit different. With that being said, as long as you have something going at all of the stages of that funnel, right? There's only four stages. It's not crazy. There's four stages to the funnel. If you have something going on at each of those stages, now you have a marketing plan. Most of the time when I work with clients or I'm on discovery calls, it becomes very clear to me that people are only focusing on one stage of the marketing funnel. And if you're doing that, you're really not going to get the results that you want. So if we can distill it down to the four stages of the marketing funnel, which are attract, convert, nurture, and close, and you can have one thing going at each of those four stages, then it's like, okay, I have a way I'm getting out in front of people. And I never tell people, go be on all of the social channels. That is a surefire way to fail, in my opinion. I am not of the mind that you need to be everywhere. I am of the mind that you can pick one platform that you like showing up on, that you know your target audience is showing up on, that you can create content for in a sustainable way, show up on that one platform and do it really well. And if you do that, then you start filling the top of your funnel. So you can get people into your world. You can offer them lead magnets, whether it's a downloadable resource or it's attending a masterclass, signing up for something of yours get them, get their names and email addresses. Then you can nurture them through email marketing and with your podcast and then close the deal at the bottom of the funnel. So to me, it is about, you have to address all four stages, but there's ways to do it that can make it feel more realistic and aligned for you as a business owner. I never want business owners to feel like, oh, marketing's icky and I have to do these things I don't want to do and be pushy and salesy and Marketing and sales is not the same thing. And there's a way to do both of them that don't have to feel gross to you. Yes. No more skeezy marketing and skeezy sales, as I always like to call it. I'm like, we are done with the skis over here at the Cure for Pod phase. Yes, I am with you. But I love that you put point out, like, where do you, one of the things you said that stood out to me is where do you like to show up? Because Mm -hmm. I've heard so many strategists say, all right, TikTok is a new best thing. You got to get over here, like put off your effort on other things. And it's like, I don't want to show up on short form video. Like that's not where I I shine. I like doing lives. I like doing posts. So I think that it's really important to reiterate that you said, show up where you like to show up, where you know your people are. Yes. I think one of the biggest roadblocks to business owners being able to tackle their own marketing is how they feel about it. And I think people feel negatively about marketing because they've been on the receiving end of that icky, sleazy stuff that we were talking about. And they hear all this advice that you need to go do this thing that doesn't feel good to you. And so we, I think a lot of times business owners develop this relationship with marketing that is just automatically like, they have this feeling of like, ugh, I have to go do this instead of, oh, I get to go create content and connect with my ideal audience and provide value and build relationships and do awesome things through my marketing. And that's really my goal in working with business owners is to get them to that place. 
instead of the feeling of dread when they hear the word marketing. Yeah. I think that with the noise of social me- media, it's in, a, in like a whole with all the different coaching out there, that that's part of like, for me, as soon as I put blinders on, like I do podcasting, like this is my thing. And I really focused on that. The other stuff didn't become as overwhelming. Did I take my blinders off and jump into some platforms and burn off out on occasion? Yeah. And I love that you're, you've, you've broken it down. Like there are four places you need to be in this funnel Mm -hmm. and it can be one thing. So for you, like, what are your four main places Mm -hmm. for each step? Yeah. Not all of them, but just like in each step, like, sorry. (laughs) Just give one example for each of the four stages you're saying. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know from the, just off the top of your mind, what would be one in each phase? What would be one platform you would use for attract, nurture, yep. convert, and you yep. know, close. So for, yeah, for me personally, LinkedIn is my platform. I absolutely love LinkedIn. I have met amazing people across the world on LinkedIn. I have established some really great business relationships. I have found clients. Clients have found me. I've found my voice in the content that I create and post on LinkedIn. I absolutely love the platform. So for me personally, LinkedIn plays a big role at that attract phase at the very top because it helps me get out in front of new people and also at the nurture phase because the people who follow me and are connected with me see my content on a regular basis because I post Monday through Friday. For that convert stage, so if I back up, so let's say attract, right? Okay, new people are finding me on LinkedIn for convert, getting them to get on my email list. I have a few different lead magnets. I kind of went in a little bit of a frenzy this year creating more. So I I had a social media guide and template for the longest time. It was the only thing I had. And then I'm like, okay, this isn't good enough because I don't just do social media. I do. I touch all of the pieces of marketing. So I created a marketing quiz where you can quiz yourself and and kind of, and it's related to the marketing funnel. So we can also share that link talking about what, how many activities you're doing at each of the stages and that it gives you this fun little result that has a Shit's Creek gif associated with it, which is, which is cute. Sold. Yeah. Right. That I feel like most people, I feel like half the people who take it really just the Shit's Creek is what pulls them in. So I, I created that as an example of a lead magnet. So I, I had that on my LinkedIn profile for a while. I was pushing it out on any podcast I was interviewed on or any place I was going where I could like share a resource. Here's my quiz. So that was a way for people to enter my world now they go on my email list, they get a nurture sequence, which is a set, an automated drip campaign. If I'm speaking language that somebody doesn't understand who's listening to the show, it's an automated drip campaign of emails. So emails that are set to go out at a certain sequence, really just helping to get people to know me better, telling them how I got into the business that I'm doing. And here's a podcast you can listen to me on. And here's some free resources you can check out, that kind of thing. And then if we move to the nurture stage, again, I I use LinkedIn as a form of nurture. I also am very consistent with sending out a monthly email to my list. It is like a newsletter feel, but it's, I get excited to create it because a lot of people feel negatively about newsletters, which if you do find, don't do a newsletter, find something else that makes sense for you. But I, I always start out with kind of a little blurb about what's kind of going on in my life right now, maybe personal, maybe business, maybe related to the time of year and and where I live, that sort of thing, help people get to know me and connect with me. I share whatever kind of recent content I have, whether it's a blog or a podcast or a new offer I'm launching or a LinkedIn Live I'm hosting, whatever it is. And then I always share two resources from people that are in my network. So they're free things that people could just check out. So that's how between LinkedIn and email marketing, those are kind of my big nurture things. And then it closing the deal, which we haven't talked a lot about. Again, I don't get into the sales side of it, but I just think about like testimonials, where people can leave reviews for you, those kinds of things. So I always make sure that I'm sprinkling those throughout my LinkedIn content. And this year I invested in getting a nice case study all all formatted and made pretty. So I have that as well to kind of help with that sales process. Oh, that's amazing. And what I love about what you just shared is that it's simple. Like t- you just took the overwhelm out of my mind and a lot of a lot of people because it's like LinkedIn, <laughs> freebie, LinkedIn and podcast episodes. 
and then we go into the the actual closing portion and i think that we forget sometimes that those testimonials those things can be really helpful in that closing and i think that you just took so much of the noise out of the marketing that we're all getting hit with when we are sitting there scrolling our feeds yes well, good. I'm glad because so as I was you. talking on and on, I was like, I hope I'm not making this too complicated. I'm glad it still sounds simple. No, to me, I mean, it couldn't be simpler. It's like LinkedIn. So you're on one platform right there. Your freebie, which you've already built. So that's kind of a passive thing. Mm-hmm. Minus like, then you go into nurture. There you have to start working again because you're creating your monthly newsletter or whatever we want to call it if people don't mm-hmm. like that word. Your your monthly value bomb email. <laughs> like, there you go. Change your, name, change your name if you don't like <laughs> newsletter. And then you go into that closing phase of like, now do you want more? So you have served, but out of those four funnels, you're really only working two of them in two places. LinkedIn. Yeah. I guess. And as a guest you, or as, as in your podcast mm-hmm. and that email funnel. So there's three places. Yeah. And like, like, <laughs> right. Let if you still all think the marketing is hard, like, fall away. Yeah. I mean, I really wanted to like break it down that simple because that's what I'm getting from you. And I want to make sure that's what the listeners are getting too, is it can be this simple. We mm-hmm. don't have to be everywhere to have a very successful business like you have. You've picked a platform you like showing up on that you're able to create content for your people are there. Mm -hmm. You've attracted them. You've built something to, I forget what the second step was called, but that free step. Yeah. Convert. convert Sometimes people get stuck. It's converting someone to become a lead, not converting them to become a client. That's that first conversion point. I think that's where my brain would got a little, a little sidetracked, but it's just, it's that simple. And I, I appreciate that you're making it that simple for us. So for the person that is out there, that's really just in a hot mess express and (laughs) burnout stage of being on every platform, you've got to go get one of Christy's given you so many cool resources. Of course, they'll all be in the show notes, but thank you. Because I mean, my mind is like, pick up the jaw off the floor, Jen, because like it can be (laughs) that simple when we allow it to be. Yes. I think there's a lot of like we've already talked about a little bit, there's a lot of feeling like, oh, I need to be everywhere. Or these marketing gurus are telling me I need to do this and I need to do that. And while I see this person doing all these things, like there's a lot of like, I think comparisonitis, there's a lot of like feelings like I need to do all these things because everyone else is doing them or all the people are saying I need to do them. And I really, I don't know, I get really excited when I can help a business owner like take down the temperature with how they're feeling when it comes to marketing and seeing that there's a simple, clear way to tackle it. I mean, to me, there's, there's no better feeling in the world than helping a business owner feel not only competent and capable, but excited to be like, okay, I can do this. Like, and I want to. Oh, The want to part is so important too. And I think that when you do spread yourself so thin, because a lot of us are like independent podcasters, solopreneurs, and marketing is a huge part of your business. But if you are spending eight hours a day in all these different strategies, trying to market and like do all of that, you don't have time to serve. So when Mm -hmm. are you getting paid for your efforts? Okay, you get that one hour of client call and you're marketing in the wrong way for seven hours. Did you just make minimum wage? Are you sure you even made minimum wage? (laughs) Right. It's interesting too, talking about the time aspect, because I've been asked frequently how much time I spend on LinkedIn, because people who talk to me know, like, I'm I'm all gung-ho on LinkedIn. Well, how much time do you spend there? So I could never answer that question until recently. I decided to do like a little audit, and I wasn't like... I had no goal in it as far as like limiting my time or it was just like, okay, let me start tracking. So I downloaded an app on my phone. Every time I went to go on LinkedIn, I logged in on the app to time track. And I found that I found, I spend about six hours a week on LinkedIn. 
And I was just sharing that with my my community today, my implementation support group. We had office hours today and I, I shared that with them and they were like, wow, that's really not that bad. Like that's, that feels doable. And so maybe if I can share that more with people, it's like, okay, six hours a week isn't like, yeah, it's, it's a good chunk of time. I don't want to minimize that. But if you can kind of set parameters around it, and even if you could carve out an hour a day to say, okay, I'm creating content and I'm engaging with people and I'm sending, I'm, I'm responding to comments. I'm commenting on other people's posts. I'm sending some DMs like one hour a day in the grand scheme of all of the marketing tactics you could be like pulling your hair out over. I don't know what other platforms would require, but just as a data point in case it's helpful to people. Yeah. I know podcasting is, you can realistically do a great podcast in two hours a week if you plan it. So let's say you take your LinkedIn strategy for six hours, you add a two hour podcast strategy. Okay. There's eight hours of your marketing. That's one day. That means if you're <laughs> working a full time, 40 hour standard week. I don't like to say that, but because we all got into entrepreneurship, so we didn't have to do standard, yes. although we're doing more. Right. But if you do that, that's one of your five, that's one of your five days. That gives you five days to serve clients in a paid capacity. Mm -hmm. Your yep. minimum wage just went up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You it, are no longer making minimum wage. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And I think that is going back to your point, like making it feel doable and realistic and simple and and putting some numbers to how much time you could estimate to spend on these things. Maybe it will help people feel like it is more realistic. Yeah. The numbers I think are are truly I think they're important because people get into so many different things. Like I got into like posting 10 times a day and la I'm like, I don't have time for this. Like I really didn't have time to create that much. But mm -hmm. with this strategy on one platform, I'm like, all right, I'm sold. LinkedIn, <laughs> here I come. <laughs> Sign me up. That's been on, it's been sitting, it's on my list. It's the thing that's sitting on my desktop and it's sitting on a post-it note that says LinkedIn in 2023. We are now in July of 2023 and you know what I'm not doing? <laughs> LinkedIn, yes. yes. Yeah. But I did give up some <laughs> other platforms. Good, good. So that's where I started. But I it's funny. appreciate, sorry, it's funny. I would go for it. I was just going to say it's funny because I started a monthly marketing seminar membership in January. And then I also just started this implementation group for any of my past clients. And all of the, almost all of the people in both of those groups are really wanting to do more on LinkedIn. So it is a very hot topic. Maybe it's, maybe that's just the nature of people coming to me because they know how passionate I am about LinkedIn. But there's a lot of people with that on their on their plate for this year. So you're not alone. Well, in February of this year, they came out with a podcast report for podcasters, like what the wealthy, profitable podcasters are actually doing. Mm. And they are doing blogs, newsletter, and LinkedIn. They are not showing up on Metaverse and TikTok. Those were the top three. LinkedIn was the only social platform that was in that top three. So that's why it's on my list. Yeah. Because as a, from the stand, the point from a podcaster, that is where the top podcasters that are actually profitable are hanging out the most, according to this big market. I mean, I think it was done by six or seven huge podcast companies. That's awesome. So, I am LinkedIn. a huge data person. So I love, I absolutely love that and that you're using that to guide your efforts. Yeah, that's why I was like, oh, Instagram, you're going to become an Instagram. It's it's still in process, but it's, it's going to become an Instagram website because you can make it as like a website so people can hit it kind of like your website and get redirected because so many people mm. look for you there. So I don't want to not be there, but I don't want to post there anymore. Gotcha. So yeah. good for but you. Yeah, I'm excited. And I'm excited that you're using LinkedIn. I mean, thank you, universe, for another sign. And to all of you out there, like this is another sign that it might be time to think about LinkedIn and to getting into Christie's space so you can make it this easy. Because if you can do LinkedIn, 
a freebie, an email list, <laughs> and your podcast, and that's it. How good would that feel? Yeah. And I'm speaking like, of in. freebies, as if I haven't thrown enough out there, I do have a free resource <laughs> library, which is another another lead magnet I created this year. And it was honestly because I've just Loom has been like a huge I've I've spent so much time on Loom this year, whether it's for clients, for prospects, for doing a tutorial video that I want to throw up on LinkedIn, whatever it is, I decided I'm like, I need to create a free resource library and put a bunch of these videos in there so that people can go and get my tips and tricks about LinkedIn and the software tools I use and those sorts of things. So there is, there are some LinkedIn resources in that free resource library to help you kind of navigate like searching for people and how do you use hashtags and those kinds of things. So pretty much everybody knows they need to be in your space like yesterday so that they can have it super easy and you even have free resources to help us get started so like what more could you want like get your booty over <laughs> to christy's face because she's gonna help you make this marketing thing not so yeah. scary so i'm, I'm so excited <laughs> awesome i do give a lot away so for it, free it was, it was funny too i had someone recently tell me like i was surprised your free resource library is actually free i'm like I am not one of those sleazy marketers. Like, yes, it's free. If I'm calling it free, then it's free. <laughs> so no strings attached. And, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic about like, oh, buy my thing or come in for my free thing. But if you really want it, it's like 50 bucks. And I'm like, wait, yeah. $700. Wait, wait, this was free yeah. a minute ago. <laughs> you so waited, I appreciate that. You waited three minutes. The price just doubled. <laughs> So if you were to add an ingredient to the cure for pod fade, what ingredient or ingredients would you want to add? Start marketing yesterday. Can I say that? Is that fair? Yep. That's fair. <laughs> I think honestly, it goes back to what we were talking about that you can't wait until you build the thing to start marketing it and talking about it it's never too soon to start bringing people into your world and you do that by some of the things that we talked about today picking one social platform figuring out how you can provide value to your audience bring people into your world I think that not getting the order of those things mixed up in your mind is really really important yeah I know for me with our conversation, my podcast is going to move down to my nurture instead of my attract. I think that that's a common, it's funny because I, I don't have my own podcast yet. Well, technically I have a private podcast for my members where they can listen to the recordings of our sessions, but I don't have a public podcast for that reason that I know I can't just build it and they will come. And so I'm like, I don't want to build something and have it be like, then be like disappointed. Like, oh, I didn't get more subscribers. I didn't get, because I think you need to go into it with realistic expectations of what you want to get from, what you're expecting to get from it. And like we talked about, what role is it playing in your funnel? I think being more clear on that before you jump into it is going to help you be more successful with it. Oh, yeah. I do see how it could fit into the attract too, but I know now that I need to spend a little bit more time in attract mode on a different, different platform other than just podcasting. So I appreciate this conversation and I am so grateful for this conversation because I know where my efforts need to go in this last half of 2023. So next year, 2024, I don't have to be marketing seven of my eight hours every day. Yes. Yeah. We're smarter, not harder. I'm all about it. And doing it the right way with a strategy. So I appreciate it. So where can everybody, we know you're on LinkedIn. Like, <laughs> do you want to drop, like, what is, like, how, again, it's all in the show notes because we all like yes. to click and go. But yeah. where can people find you? Just because I like people to say, like, hey, here it is. <laughs> Here's where you can find me. Yeah. Yeah. LinkedIn, definitely find me there. It's Christy Mitchell, K-R-I-S-T-I. Mitchell. A lot of times people try and spell it wrong, but if you search that, you will find me on LinkedIn and also go to christymitchell.com. Again, K-R-I-S-T-I-M-I-T-C-H-E-L-L.com. There are a, all the resources we talked about. You can, you can browse my blog. You can, you can poke around and look at a bunch of stuff there. So LinkedIn and my website are, are the two best ways to find me and see what I'm all about. 
And there is, there's so many goodies. I was poking around and I'm like, I need all this in my life right now. So <laughs> thank you. I really, appreci- I really do. I'm not just saying that. I really do appreciate that you just made this, this simple for us. Like it can literally be like three platforms. <laughs> Boom. Like mic drop right there. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad I could help. I appreciate you having me on the show. Perfect. That's how I end them. I don't like this to be the last. I don't like to be the last 